Hi, welcome everybody to this brief tutorial on using the R exams package for creating online tests for Open OLED. So the starting point is within R and I'm working now in a directory where I've stored a couple of exercises. All of these are available within the exams package and I created a little R script that I will take you through now. So first we start by loading the exams package then we create a vector of exercises in this case seven exercises of different types ranging from single choice over numeric to more complicated items and we will see later on within open OLED what these exercises are and how they are displayed in open OLED. then i set a random seed in order to be able to replicate this exam exactly and then finally, I call the exams to open OLED function with the vector of exercises we created before. I plan to use three random replications from each of these exercises and I will store this as a file with the name R exams. There are further options we could use here. We could, for example, also limit the maximum number of attempts per exercise so maybe let's set this in addition to two attempts per exercise and then you saw that there were several other options we could have used as well so let's go ahead and now create these random replications convert them to html embed the html in suitable xml files and then store the xml in a zip file and this is created now at the bottom here in our working directory by default and here it's called rexams.zip okay now let's switch over to open OLED where I'm on my landing page and now we want to import this test we have just created into open OLED this involves two steps in the first step we will include the learning resource as such and in the second step we will embed the learning resource as a certain course element in one of our OLED courses. So the first step is simple. We go to the authoring tab and click on import and then we select the file. We go to our computer here it opens on um, the directory that i've been using so far and um, i can use the rexams.zip file and include that then it uploads uh, the zip file and we can choose a name so let's say this is our exams and i add the date to be able to identify this exercise later on. Then we import everything and after the import we can set all sorts uh, of meta information, a name, an image, a license and so on. But the only necessary information is um, the name and we have already selected that. So I will stop here. And then we see a preview of the test we have just imported and here we see the seven exercise questions and as we will see these later on I'm also skipping this here okay and we're done with that so now we have the learning resource the online test itself imported into open OLED and now we can use them in several courses if we want to so I'm switching back to my courses tab here and I'm going to the course in which I'm going to use this. So I'm using my R exams course for illustration here. And first to be able to include um, the online test, I need to go to the course editor and uh, create a suitable course element. There are two different suitable course elements. Either we can use a test. This is for the scenario where we, as the instructors, want to see the test results of each individual student. Or we can use a self-test where we can let students take the test, 
but we only see certain aggregated results. So let's use a full test here. We need a name. Let's say this is just an online test. We could add further information, um, instructions what to do in the test. But for simplicity, I'm skipping that here. Then we can control the visibility and access to the test uh, to a certain time window, for example. And then we can use a test configuration. So I'm doing this here and entering in the search function the starting um, character string for the name of my file. And now I'm including the learning resource and here we have it. Then we have uh, a few further options uh, that we can use to fine tune the online test. As a rule of thumb, Everything that happens within the test, like how many attempts do I have for each exercise, well, is my solution being shown after entering an incorrect result, and so on, all of this is controlled from within R using the exams to open all that function. But everything on the outside, what happens with the test as a whole and how it's embedded in the course is controlled in these menus here. So the maximum score and the cut value have already been set by the exams to open OLA function, but um, I can say, for example, I want to show results on the test homepage and then we also do that after the test has been submitted and usually I'm including all of the possible summaries to give students full information about the results they obtained. Then I go to the options tab and here we can also uh, control further details. Either we can inherit the whole configuration from the learning resource or we can adjust it for the spe specific online test we're creating here. So we can say, for example, every student is only to allowed to take this test once. And we can, for example, show the points and the score in the test. And um, we can also allow students to suspend the test and resume it later on. Then we save these options and then we publish the entire course and finish and we close the course editor and we're back in the course and now we've done everything and the test is ready to use. Here for illustration I'm starting the test once. And then we see what this test looks like. On the left in the menu, we have the seven exercises we included. At the top, we see our current score. We have only zero points of the 60 possible up to now. And then we get the first question. And I will briefly take you through these seven questions so that you can see what kind of exercises you can include in OpenOLED using the export from the R exams package. The first question is a simple knowledge quiz question, single choice, and here we're selecting the correct answer. Bern is the seat of the federal authorities in Switzerland, and we submit the answer, and then we see that our actual score increases to one of the 16 possible points. We also see here on the left, the question was answered, um, the, the green mark just signals we have answered it. It's not the signal that we have answered it correctly though. And um, then we see the second question here. I've chosen a question that highlights that OpenOLED uses MathJax to get a very nice display of mathematical equations. And here I'm just entering a random result and then we see this is incorrect. Because I've enabled the solution switch, I see the full correct solution afterwards. 
and um, because I've also allowed two attempts per exercise, you see that here on the left we have just used up one of our two attempts, we can enter the solution a second time. Of course, this does not make sense in a real assessment setup. You would either use multiple attempts or show the solution, but not both at the same time. But here it's quite handy that I can show you that the correct result that is shown in this solution is actually the correct result. My actual score increased to two of the 16 points. The third question highlights that I can include our output as verbatim code chunks in our exercise. And here we see the output from a t-test and then we need to answer a couple of questions. The, the first item asks us about the absolute value of the test statistic, whether a one-sided test was used, whether the p-value is larger than 5%, and then we can show that the waiting time at um, SPA AG is lower than at CONSUMO. And then we submit the answer and can scroll up again. And here we see our result increase to three points. The next exercise highlights we can include images in our exercises and then, for example, use a multiple choice setup to ask questions about this uh, image. And um, here we can also try to get the correct result. The school is similar and the distribution is in A is approximately symmetric and I'm answering this and again I got the point. The fourth question or the fifth question already is about um, uh, a text result. Here we asked about the specific R function and we need to enter the correct string exactly. Here this is LM and we can submit the answer and we get the point. The next question has um, data embedded as a CSV file. If I click on that, I can download it and later on open it in R or another statistic software if you want to. And then I can use it to run a linear regression of Y on X and then first answer a single cho choice question whether or not X and Y are significantly correlated. And then I can answer a numeric item, what the slope um, of this regression is. I'm skipping this and showing you the last question. And um, this is one with multiple numeric inputs arranged in a table, in this case, in a fourfold table. And based on this story, I can try to fill in the entire table and afterwards I could submit my answer. Here I'm skipping this as well and finishing my test now. I have to confirm this. I can then still have a um, look at every one of these questions and finally I close the test and again confirm it and then I get an overview of all the results. I see my overall score and then I could go along and review the individual sections showing me what my response has been, what the correct response would have been and so on and so forth. Okay, I hope I've shown you now how you can import online tests from R to OpenAllBot.